Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. Today, we're gonna concentrate on our once a month grocery haul and talk through how we use that, how we determine what we need to order and where we order from. This is all so important when it comes to the home economy. And oftentimes the homemaker and the home cook is in charge of the home economy, being responsible with the resources that we have and finding ways to use those that benefit us in the kitchen. So that's what we're gonna be talking through today. I even made myself some lists so I could make sure to cover the most helpful points for you. I remember when I was getting started, just sort of managing a kitchen and kind of understanding this home economy and grocery ordering, I found it extremely overwhelming. I thought you had to order everything in 50 pound bags <laughs> and you had to store them in, you know, recycled frosting tubs from the grocery store. Maybe some of you did the same thing. But providing enough food for a family, it doesn't always come down to buying in bulk. It comes down to buying in an economical way. So here's probably the most important piece of the puzzle. If you're looking to create a whole food kitchen, a kitchen where you're cooking food from scratch, that means that instead of stocking your pantry with rice a and boxed cereal, you're gonna be stocking it with supplies, with the foods that you need to actually make the recipes that puts food on the table. So this means you have to think backwards. So the very first place that I would recommend starting is to create a menu. I do this for you over on Substack. If you'd like a printable version, I'll link to our Substack newsletter where this gets emailed out twice a month below. You can check this out. This is what I'm actually making for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The point is to work backwards so that you have a grocery list that you're working from. Now, once you've done that and you've sort of established the food that you want to eat, there's a few reasons why a once a month grocery haul is really beneficial. The first of which is that you'll always have the supplies that you need on hand. This is not only convenient, but it also really helps to eliminate that pressured feeling at mealtime when you think, oh my gosh, what am I going to make? Do I even have the supplies to make that? Yes, you do, because you've planned ahead. We all have to eat right? We all want to eat foods that we love, that we're excited about eating, and we're learning how to cook. We're learning how to be more economical in our kitchens. And thirdly, most of us operate with set funds. That means we need to work within a budget for the month of food. So one of the great ways that we can take down our food costs is by actually buying the ingredients, not the pre-prepared or pre-packaged foods. So this means that you as the home cook and as the home economist might have to do a little bit more work in menu planning and in grocery shopping, but that's okay. You're up for the challenge. I'll be honest with you, food is our family's biggest expense. And that might not be a totally fair comparison because we basically run a cooking school out of our kitchen. So we go through a lot of food, but the money that we put into growing our own food here on the farm, whether it's in the garden, in the barnyard, and the money that we spend on our monthly groceries is our biggest expense. However, this is something that we have just chosen to prioritize. That doesn't mean that food needs to be your biggest expense as well, but it does mean that in order to stock our kitchen well in the way that works for our family, this is something that we've had to set forward as our priority and say, this is what we're gonna concentrate on. And I'll tell you, I feel really grateful for all the years of cooking from scratch um, that not only have provided us with a ton of joy, but also have provided our children with really excellent nutrition, which is such a gift to be able to give them. So we're still fighting the fight. We're still cooking from scratch and putting all this effort in and allocating a huge amount of our monthly budget to food every single month. So our big once a month haul that we get, like you see here, comes from Azur Standard. This is a company most of you have probably heard of that's based out of Oregon. We have been Azur Standard customers for, oh man, 15 years, a really long time. Originally, I was a little overwhelmed at the process and you maybe have even looked into it and felt the same. The thing that worked for us, which I didn't realize at the time, is that we could actually become our own Azur Drop. 
Because of the amount that we order each month, we set it up with the company to have a drop just down the road from us. So it doesn't take us long to go down there and get it. But here's the thing, in those 15 years, Azure has also created new routes all over the United States. So I'll put details on how you can find an Azure drop that's close to you or how you can become your own Azure drop below the video. Here's a big piece of the puzzle for us when it comes to Azure and why we depend on that monthly order so much. We order a lot of our organic animal feed from Azure every month. This is stuff that we cannot get at our local feed supply stores. So organic peas, organic oats, organic alfalfa pellets, organic livestock uh, pellets, and even our chicken grain. We order this in 50 pound bags. And we order a lot of those 50 pound bags. Again, not product that's available to us locally and not a product that's capable of being shipped through the mail. So in an age of Amazon and overnight delivery, it might seem strange to plan for a once a month delivery and meet up with a semi truck to get your order, but I promise you it's not that complicated. Once you get in and once you find your drop and once you find the products that you like to order, and I'm gonna share some of my favorites with you, but there are restrictions on what we can order online realistically. And so Azure has helped us as a functioning homestead to kind of fill in those gaps, especially when it comes to big products like 50 pound bags of flour or 25 pound bags of oats, things that we order for a family that might take us a month to go through, it might take us six months to go through. But because it's economical and because we can just pick it up at our drop, it works really well for us. Okay, so allow me to get into the weeds just a little bit here because I actually really want this to be helpful for you if you're learning how to stock your kitchen and learning how to do any of this or just learning how to get better at it. When I refer to a drop, that is where a semi truck loaded with all the products that you've ordered is loaded and you will meet up with them. So a lot of times, and this is how we did it for years, there was a drop in our nearest town. So we drove into town, met in a parking lot with a bunch of other people who had ordered as well. The semi truck would pull up, unload the order and then everyone would take their packages. Pretty simple. Now we moved about 10 miles out of town. And like I said, because of the size of our order, the semi truck is capable of driving out here and we meet up with them here once a month. Don't get bogged down. Let me explain how simple the process is. You go to Azure's website and create a customer account and fill your shopping cart with all the things that you would normally get at your feed store, at your grocery store, at your garden supply store. They have a lot of available things. Now, when you go to process that order, it'll say, hey, find a drop near you. And a drop just means a place where you can meet up with other people who have also ordered from Azure. So oftentimes this might be in your closest town or in a few towns over, somewhere close by your location. So you find the drop near you, you request to be added to that drop, then the next time that the Azure truck comes through and drops at your point, you'll be given a time and a place to pick it up. You go, you pick it up, you bring it home. It's really not that complicated. So what I get in my monthly grocery order varies seasonally. In the winter time, this would probably include quite a bit more produce. Um, this time of year is we're beginning to pull a bunch of things out of the garden. I don't need as much produce. I always need animal grain, so that's always on my list every single month. Like I mentioned, peas, oats, chicken feed, livestock grain. Um, but these are sort of really year round pantry staples. Some of them I can make myself, but I choose not to. Um, we all have to make choices on what's worth it and what's not worth it for us in the kitchen. We only have so much energy and so much time and so much money that we can spend. So we have to allocate that in certain ways. So let's walk through a few of my favorite products because I know it can be really overwhelming to just hit a website with all the available goods and not really know what to get. Um, so right now we're milking our dairy sheep which means we have beautiful fresh milk. But because we're finishing out the homeschool year, this isn't quite the right time for me to be making soft cheeses and butters and yogurts and all those wonderful things that I love to make. So instead, I get a really high quality 
uh, version from Azure. So I get my monthly butter. This is a Sierra Nevada butter that I love. Um, I also get this British, British organic cheese that I'm absolutely crazy about. They just started carrying this, um, which you can see I buy a lot of because we eat a lot. Um, Strauss has really wonderful yogurts and then kind of just your normal condiments that again, I could make, but I'm not making like ketchup, um, soy sauce, Worc oh, I'm going to butcher this word again. Wor Worcestershire. I even watched a video on how to pronounce it. So I wouldn't sound so silly. Um, let's see. This is a black fermented garlic paste. That's really wonderful that they carry, um, some vanilla extract, peanut butter, buttermilk, kind of pantry staples. This is stuff I order all the time. And I keep a bin down in my root cellar and I'll just toss the, you know, soy sauce in there so that if I run out of my bottle upstairs, I always have some at the ready, which helps that mealtime panic. So really kind of standard stuff. But if you look over here, this is also really standard stuff for a pantry, stuff that we're not growing, not capable of growing ourselves. Okay. So for example, apple juice infused dried cranberries, which I'm quite crazy about. Um, my lemon trees are doing really well out in my greenhouse, but they're not producing lemons quite yet. So I get organic lemons, which are not available at my grocery store from Azar every single month. It's also a very good source for things like chocolate, baking chocolate or eating chocolate, organic chocolate chips without any additives, really wonderful. Um, one of the products I order every single month is maple sugar. This is the sugar that I bake with and pretty much do everything with unless I'm making something with maple syrup or honey. So this is my natural sweetener of choice. Um, and Azar carries it in these really wonderful bags. So when they come, I just zip off the top and put it into one of my glass jars and keep it in my baking area. Really simple. And they can just store down in the root cellar just like this until you need to open them. All right, a few of my other favorite items. I've got sliced almonds, cornmeal. That's maple sugar, maple sugar, maple sugar. <laughs> um, active dry yeast, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds. These are a really wonderful heirloom bean that they carry called snow cap. If you've ever grown dried beans in your garden, you know how much room they take up and how low of a yield you get. So I've chosen instead for this season of our life to just buy the dried beans. <laughs> Um, they also carry these really wonderful red walnuts, which I'm crazy about. So these are the walnuts that I always have in my pantry. And then let's see over there, some cornstarch and some pumpkin seeds, celery, like a few things that you just kind of need to have on hand all the time. These are all things that our kitchen is never without. And so even though some of the products change seasonally, this is the kind of stuff that you'll see on my order every single month so the kids know they can always find this stuff in the pantry. And I know when I'm building my menu that all of this is here. All right, so if you're thinking, Shay, yeah, this is way too overwhelming. This sounds like a lot. Fair enough. This is sort of a role and sort of a process that develops over time. So like I mentioned at the beginning, when I started out, I didn't know how to do all of this or plan ahead to all these things but I knew that I was really motivated to provide my family with the best food that I could while staying in the budget that we had decided was right for our family. So I'm gonna put some helpful links for you below this video, um, a few relevant videos that I think you might find helpful, some links to Azure's website so you can check out if there's a drop near you or you can learn more about getting set up as a drop yourself. So let this be an encouragement to you. If you're looking to get your food planning, your food budget, your food menu on track, we have resources to help you. I'll put a link to our printable recipe and meal plans below the video. You can of course check out Azar's website. Just rest assured, even though you might feel a little overwhelmed now, oftentimes the things that are best for us take a little bit more effort. That doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they're worth it. Yeah.